Hello there, we are back. Thank you very much for staying with us. As part of Women's Month, we kickstart our focus on women in business with particular emphasis on those who found it hard to start but made it anyway. Our guest today discovered a huge gap in the funeral undertaker's market, especially with the service and products that most funeral homes offered. Nomfundo Mkoi, the founder and director of Ikebeloti Group, had to hit the ground running when she started her own business without any formal education. She has so far proven that women can make it and can also empower others. She joins us now. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, Colin. Yeah, so I understand you got into business without knowing anything about it, so you made it. That's quite strange. Yeah, I made it. I was a school teacher before. And, 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 and the caterer afterwards. And after that, I tapped into this business where I, I saw a gap in the market. I looked at the, the undertakers that were there pres at that time, and I realized that all of them, they didn't have everything. I wanted to create a one-stop shop for families when, when, when they lose their loved ones. V very in interesting for somebody who doesn't know anything about a business and talking about finding a gap. Let's go a little bit backwards. Uh, this sounds like somebody who resigned from her job mm -hmm. to start a business. That's quite risky to resign, take your pension, mm -hmm. invest it in something that you don't know if it will work out and all that. In identifying the gap and not knowing anything about business, did you know any kind of risk that you were taking at that time? Firstly, I didn't even take my pension. I didn't have it at the time. Mm. I, started, I started this business with no capital at all. But because I had passion, I researched about the business. And, and I saw that even parlors that were there, they were just focusing on bearing only. And I wanted to create a one-stop shop. I created packages that, that made the family not to look elsewhere. That, you know, our packages, where I come from, they have everything. You find we take the body, put it in our mortuaries. After that, we, we, we organize the entire funeral, the entire burial, where we offer mm. tents. You, you know, starting a business... Without even using your pension, yes. do you know how many entrepreneurs that I have interviewed who resigned mm -hmm. said that they were using their pension as their capital? So with you, just give us insight. How do you start a business without money? I, I researched and I was selling some clothes on the side just to fund this business in, in the funeral industry. And f firstly, I started it from home, from Hammersdale, where I was known. It's very risky to start a business where you're not known. So with people that trusted me, that knew where I was coming from, and you know with uh, undertakers, they're not trustworthy at times, and especially if it's payroll schemes. I started from Hammersdale with the people that knew me very, very well, and I knew exactly what type of products were lacking, what type of service they needed. And I offered that, and I grew, I grew it from that. But Numfundo, this industry is crowded, and it's male-dominated. How, how, how wide was the gap? It was hard when I started. I started 10 years ago, 2009, when I started. Um, I remember I was the only woman at the time that I know that started from scratch that did not even inherit it. But I didn't look at men. I just applied my excellency. I just researched. I went to, I traveled a lot to research in, 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 in a lot of um, funeral expos. And I made sure that I created products that were Mm. equal to none. Mm. So you're feisty and resilient, but then how do you cope with competition? I don't regard anyone as competition. There's like 58 million people in South Africa, and KZN alone maybe has got about 12 million. My company already now, we have more than 300,000 clients. I'm sure there's, there's a lot. The, the pie is too big. We just need to share it and, and offer products that will, will attract people to mm. support you. It's not about... It's not about uh, competition. And also, we are in the burial industry. We can't fight over people. We just need to uh, support them at their time of need. Yeah, you, you know, th th there's a book by the C former CEO of Business Leadership South Africa, Lift As You Rise. And mm. you seem to be doing the same thing. As mm. you are going up, you are mm. picking other women. I understand mm. you've been working with 50 ladies that you are empowering. Yes, it's young girls, Rhoda girls. Um, I picked them up from KZN. I'm, I'm mentoring them on, on my, in my program for f five years. Yes, we run camps, we pay for their school fees, fund them, any need, any any need like school books, everything they need. Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to create more nofundos in case.
Yeah. I'm no more, then there's more people like me. Yeah, S very, very interesting uh, for us to be talking about mm. uh, starting a business without money. Let me just go back to it. There are many entrepreneurs out there who are complaining that one of the problems that uh, startup enterprises are experiencing is lack of funding. Mm. And one of the criteria is that they have to be operational for one year and mm. need to understand their finances in terms of cash flow, the balance mm. sheet, assets and liabilities. How did you manage that without any institution backing you up? Mm. What I did, like I, I was selling clothes, selling different things mm. just mm. to fund this business. I realized that I was a school teacher. I knew nothing about business. And I went to varsity college and I enrolled for a management course. Okay, so now you beefed up your knowledge <laughs> yes, about the you business. Yes, you have to have knowledge. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you won't be able to run your business properly. I had to learn, because I was a school teacher, I had to learn the lingo. The lingo that business people talk, everything, finance, finance, HR, all departments. I have to know everything within the business, yes. Okay. And, and then when it comes to understanding other nitty-gritties of running a business, say, for example, you started a business where you were not known. Mm -hmm. What is the role of uh, reputation management and networking in the entrepreneurial space because other women could say you succeed because of who you know. No, I started my business where I was known from home, okay, okay. especially because it was not a trust with the business when you come to the, the burial space. Mm -hmm. it, it, people don't trust easily. Okay. I started where people knew me, where I stayed, everything. They knew that when I collect premiums from them, they know exactly where I stay. If I, the next day I don't bury, they could come home. Yes, that's what I did. And it helped me a lot because I grew from people that knew me to, to, to spaces where people didn't know me. Where, when you look at now, it is 85 branches across KZN with more than 300,000 clients. That was not easy, but I had to start from Hammerstead and grow from that. All right. Well, where do you see yourself then in the future concerning uh, this kind of business? Uh, right now, I sit as a chairperson of SAFPA, uh, the first black woman. To, to lead in, in our industry in my province. What is SAPA? South African Funeral Practitioners Association. Okay. It's an association for undertakers, black undertakers. That uh, it, it's, a South, it's a national body, but I, I, I'm also responsible for, for KZN since I come from KZN. Mm -hmm. So I sit as a chairperson. When I look at SAFPA alone, I need us to grow as undertakers and, and, and take the lead. I know the industry, the, the, the insurance companies now, they invest, they're invading our space. We need to stop that and make sure that we take the lead in our communities. That's the one part. And for example, to alone, I look at us being an insurance company, getting our license in the near future and all taking right. the lead as well. Okay, way to go. Uh, congratulations you. and all the best. Thank you very much. Okay. Nomfo Domkoyi is the founder and director of Ikebeletu Group, kickstarting our focus on Women's Month.